William Henry Babcock was an American writer. He was born in 1849 in St. Louis, the son of Jonathan Wells Babcock and Catherine Smith. In 1874, he married Anne Johns Earl, having five sons and six daughters. He graduated from the Columbia University Law School, later George Washington University. He worked as a journalist and patent attorney in Washington, D.C. He died in Washington in 1922. His 1898 CN of the Chariots was one of the first, if not the first, Arthurian novel to come from America. In 1913, he proposed early visits of Norsemen to North America in his Early Norse Visits to North America. We will review his 1890 Cyprus speech. However, before we begin, I must warn you that the book, taking place in 1877, has two notable characters from the South, whose opinions on why slavery is just the best and needs to be brought back, and how enslaving people is somehow preventing abuse, keep popping up in the book from time to time. The novel begins with the story of a noble lady from the time of Charles II, sent to exile and disgrace at the old house at Cypress Beach in Akomak, spending her waning years in the house with bitterness before it passed to her kin. We see one of her line, Miss Jessica, arrive at Cypress Beach to visit her uncle Roger Armstrong, a low-key local gentleman who enjoys universal renown for his many public interests, no matter how contradictory his various moods, especially on the subject of minorities. Jessica arrives with a nurse whom they all call Mammy Charlotte, a former slave who has taken away from her barely newborn son to instead raise Jessica as her family could not be bothered. The author assumes she herself felt no grief about it and just accepted it as natural. Jessica is met by her uncle and her cousin, both of the Roger variety, and is accompanied by Mr. Robert Chauncey, her second choice for marriage. But though she came with Robert, she invited her first choice to join them at Cypress Beach anyway, much to Robert's annoyance. When Jessica speaks to Roger, or Prince as she calls her cousin, she is told of a hidden panel in the wall the boy revealed by accident by smashing things into it. They pry the wall open and she finds a semi-burnt roll of manuscript. She reads the story of the Lady of the Ring, the first occupant of Cyprus Beach, whose ring was given to Jessica by her uncle, and tries to read her story of shame and vice amid the burnt pages, during a most frightful night when the entire house seems bent on being malevolent. And then the mood goes... south, shall we say? As at breakfast the next day, Uncle Roger is outraged they would want to put a black child into Prince's school, and even says it is natural they would be hanged if they did, and that he'd even do it himself. Yeah, I wasn't kidding there. Then he hears of a great ruckus in town being caused by one Ishmael Vamper, a black strike organizer who only organizes the strikes for his own personal gain. As he's about to stir up trouble in Nottaway, Uncle Roger decides he must go and save him before the Mountaineers show up to murder him. And this they do, and only the intervention of Captain Archer Hawksley saves Roger from a bullet. Hawksley, Jessica's first choice for a husband, is sometimes presented as a pompous ass pining for the days of slavery and extolling the virtues of aristocracy. But the author wants us to think he has some kind of ultimate dignity to himself which I did not see. Then Vamp invites himself along to Cypress Beach to the annoyance of both, then uses his mesmeric powers to try and force Jessica to elope with him against her will, while avoiding Hawksley's threats of murder and refusing to duel him on grounds of grammar. As he elopes with Jessica, she is jettisoned from the wagon, losing the cursed ring that was apparently the cause of Vampa's power over her somehow, and runs off with Hawksley instead. Then Hawksley kills Mammy Charlotte's son and nearly kills Robert Chauncey in a worker's riot, goes off to suppress the railroad strike of 1877 in Philadelphia, and then suddenly just kills Vampa in a very brief and unsatisfying scene coming out of nowhere, before a beam falls on Hawksley and kills him. The ring is barely used, and so are Vampa's so-called powers. 